Good morning. You excited to be here, class of 2018? I'm Mark Thompson, Executive Vice President and Provost, and it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you as the newest members of our community. Welcome to all of you. And now to start you on your college journey, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. John Leahy, President of Quinnipiac University, to welcome you. It's a pleasure for me to extend a warm welcome to the class of 2018 and to, and to congratulate you on being accepted and being here today. As you know, uh, you're about 1,700 uh, strong. You've been uh, admitted from a class with over 23,000 applications. So uh, I truly congratulate you and I thank you. I also know you had many other options in terms of colleges and universities. We're delighted that you selected uh, this institution. So again, a warm welcome to you. And you know, during the um, next four years, you'll hear very often about the university's three core values. And I want to just um, mention them here this morning. Our three core values are commitment to academic excellence or high quality academic programs, a student oriented environment, and a strong sense of community. And each of those values has some enormous benefits for each and every one of you. But each of those values also puts a responsibility uh, on you as members of this community. Our commitment to high quality academic programs, uh, uh, you should know you'll be educated by the best trained, the most experienced faculty that you would find anywhere in the country, indeed the world. You'll have outstanding laboratories and the very latest and newest equipment in all of your uh, facilities. But the responsibility for you is that you take your study seriously, uh, beginning with your first class on Monday. I can't tell you how it saddens me every year I see a, a bright and able group um, of students come in just like yourselves and, uh, and some of them um, um, get distracted by things that exist on any college campus, uh, particularly in that first semester or that first year. Uh, you'll find, if you haven't already figured it out, um, the demands and the academic rigors of a university education are far, far higher and far different uh, from high school. Uh, you'll also get far greater freedom, um, and there's huge advantages to that, but it also gives you, unfortunately, the opportunity to not to take your study serious. So I really want to encourage you. There's a lot going on at the university, and particularly during this first semester, this first year. Get that first grade point average as high as you can in the first year, and, and uh, uh, you'll find sophomore, junior, and senior years uh, uh, much more uh, enjoyable. Secondly, a, a, a commitment to a student-oriented environment. We not only are concerned with the quality of education you get in the classroom, but we're also concerned about the quality of life outside the classroom. And you will find here at Quinnipiac University, outside the classroom, enormous resources that are here, again, for your benefit. Uh, whether it's tutoring services in the, uh, in the learning center or the library and their staff that can help you with research and projects, or if you have health problems or, or counseling needs, we have a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week health center uh, on our campus to give you that help. So the responsibility, though, for you is when you need some help, again, seek it out. Um, we're not going to just uh, be able to find you in, in every case and, and know when you have some problems or, or need a helping hand for one thing or another. So please, when you are having some challenges and you have some needs uh, outside the classroom, please go to the office or uh, to your uh, advisor or your dean or, um, or just seek out the, the help that's right here on this campus that's here for your uh, benefit. And then our third value, our, our sense of community. Uh, is very strong to us uh, here at Quinnipiac. And I might say, this class, you're actually not the largest class, you're pretty close, probably the third largest class in the history of the, of the university. But I'm told you're the very best, the brightest, in terms of your high school grades and, uh, uh, and SAT scores. I'm also very pleased to announce you are the most diverse uh, uh, student body that we have ever attracted. And part of being in a community here, And you will find that part of 
it being in the Quinnipiac community, we not only encourage and support, we celebrate uh, diversity. Um, and, and so you and your individuality, whether it's an ethnic or, or racial or gender or sexual orientation or religion, whatever it is that makes you a unique person, you will find support uh, for that lifestyle and for those uh, views and, uh, and interests here at the university community. But again, your responsibility is you have to respect the individuality and the differences among every other member of this community, not only the students in your class here, but all of our students and all of our, our faculty and staff. We don't tolerate hate speech or hate actions, let alone uh, hate crime on this campus. Uh, again, diversity is one of the core values as part of our, our sense of community. Um, we celebrate it, and you as the newest members of the university community, I'm just thrilled and delighted that uh, you are the most diverse, and we look forward to the, the contributions that you'll make in, in all the different ways that our students' body uh, makes the university community uh, so special here. So again, congratulations, uh, uh, a warm welcome, and uh, you certainly have my best wishes for not only a successful freshman year, but all of your years here at Quinnipiac University. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Joan Isaac Moore, Vice President for Admissions and Financial Aid, to present the class of 2018. We all look fabulous for Saturday morning. Welcome. On behalf of the Admissions Office, I'm happy to welcome each and every one of you to the class of 2018 at Quinnipiac University. All of us in admissions have enjoyed talking with you in interviews, at our open houses, our admitted student days, in your high schools, and during your orientation weekends. Today's a milestone in your lives. You've gathered here in the TD Bank Sports Center, and we'll gather here again in a little over 1,300 days, hopefully, at your graduation. The time will go quickly, and I encourage you to realize the investment that your families and the university are making in your future, and take advantage of the range of opportunities that are here for you. You can relax until Monday, get to know your classmates, and prepare for an exciting beginning to your Quinnipiac years. Let me also ask, on behalf of Academic Affairs, that if you haven't yet completed the freshman survey, TFS 2014, which is in your MyQ, please do that over the weekend. We want to know a lot more about you. This year in admissions, as John said, we received more than 23,000 applications <clears throat> from high school seniors, and we congratulate you on being selected to be part of this incoming class. Let me tell you a little bit about yourselves. We have nearly 1,700 freshmen. 76% of you come from states outside of Connecticut, from 30 states and 30 countries. 21% have self-identified as students of color. You've come from more than 800 high schools from Connecticut to California, from Maine to Florida, and overseas. On average, you ranked in the top quarter of your class academically in high school with 1,100 on your critical reading plus math on your SATs. You have lots of time to get to know each other, and just so you know, there are about 682 men and 1,105 women in the class. <laughs> but I'll make it easy for you. Raise your hand if your name is Emily, Jessica, Alexandra, Nicole, Amanda, or Samantha. All right, and raise your hand if your name is Michael, Matthew, Nicholas, Andrew, Christopher, John, and Ryan. That's 10% of the women and 20% of the men in the class. As for majors, 7% of you are in the School of Nursing. 10% are in the School of Communications. 26% are in the College of Arts and Sciences. 27% are in the College School of Health Sciences. And 30% are in the School of Business and Engineering.
Although each of you is enrolled in a particular school or college, 23% of you haven't yet chosen a particular major. But you'll have time to, <laughs> to decide as you begin your coursework in the university curriculum and learn more about each school and also decide on your goals and what's best for you. And one third of you will be staying at Quinnipiac through your graduate degree, either in programs such as physical therapy, physician assistant, occupational therapy, the BS MBA program, or the Master of Arts in Teaching. Now, when I call your state or location, I'm going to ask that you stand and remain standing until the entire class is standing. We would first like to welcome our international students, including our American students from overseas. Would you please stand? Remain standing. Okay. We'd also like to welcome, although they're small in number, students who are here from, and stand as I call your state, rema uh, and remain standing, Alaska, California, Colorado, DC, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Washington, and Wisconsin. <laughs> Adding to them, we'd like to welcome students from Pennsylvania. Please stand. Maryland and Virginia. Adding to that, students from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Rhode Island. And finally, what we call the big four, Massachusetts, New Jersey, the largest state in the class is New York and Connecticut. President Leahy, members of the faculty, administrators, let's all of us welcome our class of 2014. May we each enjoy our time together. You may be seated. And I'd like to welcome to the podium Mustafa El Hagar, President of the Student Government Association. I'd like to start off by thanking Dr. Thompson. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to congratulate the entire class of 2018 on becoming the newest members of Quinnipiac University student body. Let me hear a large applause. Now every year in tradition, the student body president gets to come up on this podium, have the privilege of writing a speech and give it, giving it to the entire freshman class. I've continued to do this tradition by writing a speech of my own. However, I also have a story that I think could relate to a lot of you. Unfortunately though, we only have time to either listen to the speech or my story. And since I'm president and I'm all about democracy, I'm not going to be the one to make this decision. The decision is all in your hands. So show of hands who wants to hear the speech. All right, who wants to hear my story? All right, I figured. Well, seeing as I don't need a speech anymore, tear that up. And I don't really need the podium anymore, so I'm just going to come down to you. Is Mike working? Great. So before I get into uh, my story, I want to let you all in on this rule that I live by here at this university. It's called the 10,000 hour rule states that in order to master any specific task or achieve success in any field, you need to commit 10,000 hours of practice towards the first. I took this quote from a book called uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And to be honest, I kind of thought the rule was crap at first, but when the book walked me through the lives of some of the most successful individuals of our, of our recent history, I started to really believe in it. 
1960, an unknown high school band playing in a rundown bar in Hamburg, Germany, every night, seven nights a week, totaling over 1,200 concerts, all within a few years. By 1964, they became known as the greatest rock band of all time. We obviously know this band to be the Beatles. In 1968, a 13 year old young computer geek snuck out of his parents' house every single night to sneak into the University of Washington and use the facility's only computer to feed his programming addiction. By 1974, he founded what is now the largest software maker in the world. Of course, this man is Bill Gates. The book doesn't stop there. It continues to give several examples of extremely successful individuals, all having one shared commonality. Before any of the, before any of the success or fame, they all had committed 10,000 hours of practice. Now let me ask you all a question. How well do you think you know yourself? I want to challenge you within the next 10 seconds to think of five words that describe who you are. Now, I don't want cliches like kind, nice, friendly. No, five words that accurately describe you and separate you from everyone else in the room. So go ahead, take the next, next 10 seconds. Now, I can imagine this was pretty hard for a lot of you. And you know, it's pretty hard for myself, too. And it was even harder for me freshman year. And the reason being is, you know, maybe we don't really know who we are yet. I mean, maybe it's because, the, maybe the reason why we can't think of five words is because, because we don't have five words to describe ourselves. That's not our fault. I think it's because we just haven't been given the experience to really learn about ourselves yet. I mean, let's be real. High school, it's all routine. You wake up every morning, you go to the same class, with the same teachers, you know, with the same people. You go to lunch, you sit at the same tables, you continue the day, go back to your parents' house, do it all over again do the same thing for four years. You cannot grow and learn by doing the same exact thing for four years. And that's what's great about college. It breaks that norm. College every day is, a, is an opportunity for a new experience. But I'm going to stop rambling on and get to my story before I run out of time. So it was about three months ago from today, I had up some of my closest senior friends from last year. I wanted to hang out with them as much as I possibly could because it was actually the day before the graduation and they were, gonna, they were going to be gone for good. And, um, I knew it was going to be kind of a depressing day, seeing as how it was the last of their college careers. And I went over there, and once I was surrounded by them, I immediately felt this emotional connection that they all shared. But I didn't. I was the outcast, obviously. I mean, I still had another year at college. Tomorrow wasn't my graduation. So I immediately realized um, that I started, to realize, I started to think about my own graduation at that point. That was the first time in my life I started to think about the fact that I had one year left of college. And I started to fear. I started to fear my own graduation. And again, I was the outcast. I started to realize that my friends weren't depressed at all. If anything, they were excited. They were smiling, laughing, reminiscing about the glorious days of their college careers, reminiscing about their childhood as if they were old men, talking about the adventurous plans they had in their lives. And me, I was scared. Why was it me, who has a whole another year left of college, how am I scared about college being over? Meanwhile, my senior friends who have literally 24 hours left are embracing it. I started to really think about college and all the years that I've had here and the one that I haven't had yet, this one. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Every year it's like its own phase with its own gross and fears. Freshman year you come in, you guys don't really know anything. That's okay. That's what the whole year is about. The whole year is about learning how to learn at this university learning about the resources we have to offer, getting to know your roommates, finding your friends, maybe finding something you want to get involved in. Sophomore year, you've been here for a while now. You've been here for a year, you're acclimated, you start utilizing everything you learned your freshman year and applying it in that one, in, this year, in the sophomore year. Junior year comes by, and you're no longer the small fish in the big pond. You're an upperclassman. You start to take life a little more seriously, thinking about your career and what you want to do in your lives. Senior year is when all the pieces fall into place. You start learning about yourself. You start deciding about the kind of person you want to be for the rest of your life. It's as if my senior friends had committed the specific task of practicing personal growth for 10,000 hours. But by spending four years at this university, it's exactly what they had done. You see, we're all full-time students here. We're basically full-time employees. But instead of work, we learn. And when you take a full work day, which is about eight hours, and you multiply it by four years, you get about 10,000 hours. So that's exactly what my senior, my senior friends had done. They had committed the, the specific task of personal growth for 10,000 hours. And that's why they were so ready, and I wasn't. They were confident. By that time, they had known about their strengths. They had 
They had found their passions and even embraced their weaknesses and found accommodations for them. That day, I wasn't ready to graduate, and today, I'm not either. And it's because I haven't clocked in enough hours. But by May 2015, I'll have committed the specific task of personal development for 10,000 hours, and I will be ready. And by May 2018, you all will have done the same and achieve extraordinary success because of it. So in the process of writing my speech, I uh, actually talked a lot to my friends, you know, try to get some insight, because I had no idea what to write this speech about. Um, and they gave me a, a ton of ideas, and I compiled the list down to five that I want to share with you all today. So number one, if it's any experience that I've ever heard that's never had a bad remark about, studying abroad. Anyone who I've ever talked to who has studied abroad has, no, has had nothing but amazing things to say about it. So utilize Quinnipiac's resources and travel the world if you can. Simply, simply putting it, study abroad. Number two, I know it sounds kind of obvious, but do your laundry as frequently as you possibly can. <laughs> it's the reason why I'm wearing clean underwear today. <laughs> Number three, don't be afraid to take on new experiences. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. It's, it's how we as humans learn. You'd be surprised that the smallest decisions you make today could have the biggest impact tomorrow. Number four, this will happen to you all a lot, it happens to me. You're gonna be walking the hallway, you'll see someone that you probably know, you even probably Facebook friends with them, but you keep your head down. Don't do that. Look them in the eyes and say hi. You'll be amazed what it does to your confidence. And number five, lastly, a wise man once told me, there's a place and there's a time for everything, and that's college. Now before I go, um, throughout your orientation sessions throughout the summer, you have all assigned the Book of Legends containing our university's creed that we all live by every day. Today I have the honor and the privilege to introduce the orientation interns who have worked tremendously throughout the whole summer to give you the experience that you all had today. So can the following names please come up? Christina, Christina Atard, Charlie Doe, Chris Alderelli, and Grace Rivera. Big round of applause. Four guys. Thank you. During your orientation session, you all signed the Book of the Legend. The Book of the Legend is a tangible symbol of our unity as Quinnipiac students. The Book of the Legend houses the Legend of the Bobcat and the Student Body Creed. These documents embody what it means to be a Quinnipiac student. When you signed the Book of the Legend, you signed your name into Quinnipiac's history and promised to live the legend and fulfill all responsibilities of the student body creed, responsibilities that begin today. The documents read as follows. The Legend of the Bobcat. The Indian spirit Habamak was doomed to eternal sleep when a spell was cast over him, but his ferocious companion, a stealthy giant bobcat with vibrant blue and fiery gold eyes was spared such a fate. Habamok now sleeps soundly, belly up, forming the peaks of the sleeping giant mountain. Today, the confident and devoted bobcat loyally defends its now sleeping giant and all that falls in its shadow. From time to time, the bobcat can be spotted around campus watching over our school. Legend says that the bobcat will allow no harm to come to those swift and brave enough to rub its paw. The student body creed, please repeat after us. I choose to be a member of the Quinnipiac University community. I choose to be a member of the Quinnipiac University community. I strive for integrity, responsibility, and academic excellence. I strive for integrity, responsibility, and academic excellence. I respect and value all members of this diverse community. I respect and value all members of this diverse community. I embrace the inclusion of all people. I embrace the inclusion of all people. I preserve Quinnipiac's traditions of pride and spirit. I preserve Quinnipiac's traditions of pride and spirit. Together, we are the architects of our future. Together, we are the architects of our future. We are the legend. We are the legend. Thanks, guys. That was great. One more thing before I go. I just want to let you all know that my office is in the upper calf in the student center. If any of you ever need anything, um, just reach out to me or anyone else on student government. We'd love to help you out. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be the, that guy on the other side of the hallway, so please say hi to me. I'd love that. And um, you know, three years ago, I was sitting in your seats, and I started my 10,000 hours. I just want to let you all know that today begins yours. And thank you very much.